as we come together and gather together in the name of Jesus today, we're here to current commemorate Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is the word Ra means new and Shana means year. Actually it means head. Ra means head and this is year. So this is the head of the new Jewish New Year. This is Jewish New Year 57 84. Boy, amen. This is where they believe that when creation was began, mm-hmm. 5,784 years ago. Mm. And we see there are certain things that we see on this day. With this being Rosh Hashanah, our Feast of Trumpets, Jesus observed these as he walked this earth. And if it's good enough for Jesus to observe, I think it's good enough for us to observe also. Well, when we look at this, the 5784 means open doors. Open doors. Now, the Jewish looked at this day as a very holy day. First of all, they looked at it as a day of judgment. And a lot of times we say judgment. Oh, no, no, day of judgment. But it was in their life, the way they view judgment is judgment is your friend. And it's for those who desire desire to have a right standing with God. That he will reveal to us what is not right and what's wrong. So God putting judgment on you is is a good thing because he can reveal to you what you need to repent of. And it's a friend to you to make you closer to him. It gets the things out of your life. Well, they also believe it's the day of the shofar blast. And when we blow the shofar, when they blew the shofar, they knew that they blew a shofar, and when they it was sound, and they believed that God heard them, oh, boy. that God heard them. Mm-hmm. So when the shofar is blown, that is signaling God, and He hears us. He hears boy. our cry. Boy. I'm going to ask Brenda to blow the shofar right now. And get your hearts ready. So as this shout, and I want you to shout after, unto God, after the shofar is up. Pour out your heart to God at this time. Because after the sound of shofar, it's his attention to your heart. And then you are able to repent of anything or just seek his presence. So, Brenda, would you blow in, blow the show for? Okay. Everybody, everybody shout. Just shout right now. Just Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Thank Jesus. you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Just a mm. Glory. And they also thought it, at this holy day of Rosh Hashanah, they also thought it was a day of remembrance. Mm. Remembrance what God had brought you out of. Mm. What God is going to bring you out of as you trust him. Mm. As you trust him, he's going to bring things out. Mm. That The desire to have <coughs> divine holiness. This mm. is a time of Rosh Hashanah that they just took the time that God you know, I've repented, I've done things, and I seek in your face, and this is my divine day of holiness, of wholeness, that that you be made whole in him. This is a day that they remembered all the things that they were brought out of until the things that he's bringing them to right now. Well, In Isaiah 62, 10, Isaiah 62, 10, I have several scriptures here. 
Oh. As I may said earlier, this is the day of 5784, the doors, opening doors, the opening doors. And Isaiah 62, 10 says, pass, pass through the gates, prepare the way of the people, raise up, raise up the highway, gather out the stones and lift your banner for the people. So what is he saying? The gates are open for you. This is an open door for you. This is an open door to be with him and to serve him. And when he goes through here, he says, I'm going to raise you up. I'm raising a way for you and I'm giving you direction to go through this open door. But as you're going through this door, you also, there are stones that are being obstacles in your life. And so what you're doing, as you go, you pick up those stones and get rid of those stones to make your pathway smooth. Make your pathway smooth. And then it says, lift up the banner for the people. Jehovah Nissi. The banner of God that is above us. That God puts a banner over us that is just love. You think about that. The love of God is a covering over us and it's a banner over us. Amen. And in his presence, Amen. as we're walking through those gates, his banner directs us. And it's the banner of love, that umbrella that covers us. Boy. In Numbers 10, 9, Numbers 10, 9, it says, if you go to war in your land against the enemy who fights against you, then you blow the trumpets and you shall be remembered before Jehovah your God and you shall be saved from your enemies. Ooh, wow. Lord. Amen. Catch that. Mm -hmm. Every one of us go through battles in life. We are not fighting against flesh and blood, but we're <laughs> fighting against the power of darkness. Yes. The prince of darkness. Yes. And all of his little imps that are trying to go around and cause us. My, my and as we go to battle, he says, blow those trumpets or blow that shofar, saying that to remember that your God is with you and he's going to deliver you. Yes. Amen. But he says, blow that shofar. And you will be saved from your enemy. Otherwise, when we blow this shofar, I want you to look at it, your life right now. What are things that are really have got you down right now? What are the things that you need deliverance of? What are the attacks of the enemy that is attacking you right now? What is Satan trying to put on to you? What are the things that things are happening in your life you don't, you know, it just so make you uncomfortable and feel downtrodden. My, my. All these things. But he says, as you blow that shofar, that is giving all your enemies notice that God is going to take over. Because mm -hmm. I trust in him yes. and he is my deliverer. Yes. And so I'm going to ask Brenda right now, if you have enemies, that, that it could be enemies that might be enemies in your health, it might be enemies in your finances, it be, might be enemies of people, but really we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but it's the spirit on those people. Yeah. And so as we blow the shofar, submit yourself to God, and we already know he hears us from blowing that shofar, mm -hmm. and right yes. now, he, when we blow that shofar, the enemies, they start running <laughs> several ways. They just cannot stand. Oh, yes. They cannot stand. So right now, you just think about the enemy <laughs> that are trying to attack you. Each my, one of us, every day we're attacked my, somehow. My. And every day, he's, but God says, you blow that shofar and I hear you and your enemies shall be scattered. So Brenda, would you blow the shofar right now?
Psalms 103, verse 20. Psalms 103, verse 20. Glory. Bless Jehovah, O angel of his, who excellent in strength, who do his command and listen to the voice of his word. Well, when we get into the word of God and we speak the word of God out loud, yes. and then God's eyes are going to and fro throughout the universe to see his word to, deform, to perform it in us. Yes. And he's, so as we learn to speak the word of God, which is the hope of our glory, and we speak the word of God, which is our strength, we speak the word of God that makes their, our enemies tremble. And then God says, all right, angels, you got your command. They are speaking my word, so it's time for you to go to perform it for the people. So then it says in Joel 2.15, Joel 2.15, it says, Blow a trumpet in Zion. Mm, Sanctify a fast and call a solemn gathering. <coughs> what is he saying? He says, blow that trumpet in Zion. Blow it into my kingdom. Mm. Blow it into my kingdom. And then we're calling you to come together. A gathering. Together the people to sanctify the congregation of the believers. Amen. Mm -hmm. We see gather the elders, mm -hmm. gather the children, and even those that suck their breast. Let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber and the bride out of his room. So as we call, as we do now, we're going to blow that trumpet again, blow that shofar, and we're going to shout, and we're going to shout that God's people will all come together Glory. in one accord. Glory. That God's people are calling a remnant together that will serve the Lord. And as we go here, we're going to shout again, and we're going to shout out loud after we blow the blast and say, hey, we're making a promise that we're going to come together in unity. We're going to be under the banner of love. We're coming together. And so Boy. the bridegroom, which is Jesus, will come out of his chamber mm -hmm. and the bride out of the room. We're no longer stuck in a place because mm -hmm. Jesus is bringing us out. He's bringing us out of that clustered place that the world tries to close in on us. Mm -hmm. But Jesus yeah. is taking us and he's taken us, and he's, Jesus is coming out to call the church, the church yeah. to come together. So as we come together right now, as Brenda blows the shofar, that we will say, Lord, unite us together, line yeah. us together. Let us come out together and gather together in a holy congregation to be able to serve you and lift up your name. In all things, Brenda, go ahead. Then it says in Joel 2.17, it says this. Let the priests, the ministers of Jehovah, weep between the porch and the altar. Now, when we talk about this, it, we think, well, let the ministers of Jehovah, well, he's all called us as ministers of reconciliation. He's all called us to be, yes. to get the word out. He's yes. all called us out. He calls us a royal priesthood. He's called us all out. And so he's saying that we get to the point that we have such a burden for other souls that we are tired of seeing people being down and out and without any hope, but bringing Christ to them to give them hope. 
It says, let them say, have pity on the people, Jehovah. Stand in the gap for the people. Give not your inheritance to shame. Or proverb among those nations. Why should they say among the people, where is our God? Where is our God? So when we're, we're going to have Brendan blow the shofar this time, and what we're going to do, we're going to we're going to pray for the other people, but also pray for our nation. Shout for deliverance of our nation. Shout deliverance right now of all the congregations. Shout right now for the delivery of our nation to be under God right now. One more. They will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Now, we, we've talked about this as an open door. This is the year of the open door. This is the day that he's going to take us in a new season. He's going to bring us through a door that no man can shut. He's going to take us to the door, but we have to choose. We have to choose if we go through the door. He says that the ones that knock on the door, he'll open the door and you can suck with him, that you have supper with him. Well, what we need to do right now, he's opened the doors of opportunity for each one of us. One, to be saved, to to serve him with all of our heart, mind, body, and soul. And uh, thanks that we'll open that door, that we'll open the door, and we'll see, have dreams, and we're going to have visions, and we're going to be able to do things that we never thought we could do because it's a new season that he's going to give us new strength the strength that we never thought we had before, but it goes back. We have to go through that open door. And this is the season right now for the open door for us to just not sit back and say, I wish there was opportunities. I wish that I could do this. I wish I could do that. Well, we got to quit wishing and go through that door. Go through that door of opportunity that he has. It's just like this. You know, I've given the illustration before. You know, when somebody gets married, when somebody gets married and they go to a place, they on their honeymoon and they open the door. And but let's look at the door first. You got a door and it's open. And what is the wood around the door called? It's a jam. It's a jam. It's called a door jam. That's the door, the jam of life, the problems that we have. And and what's the bottom of that door called? A threshold. So what he's saying to us now is I am the bridegroom and you of little strength, you of little strength, I will carry you over that door. Yes. I will carry you over that door. So when we have open doors, we have to realize that he's the bridegroom. And even though sometimes we just come up and look through the door and see all the things that are good, but we don't say, well, that's not for me. But no, he says, you of little strength, I will carry you. And he'll take us up and he'll lift us up and carry us through that threshold. And that's the door of opportunities, the door that how we can serve him, the door where, where he'll, he will just give us that confidence and joy. He'll give us that peace. A lot of us, we don't have peace in a lot of areas of our life, but that's an open door to peace. He wants to carry us into his Lord, peace, amen. his peace that passes all understanding. Amen. He wants to carry us to that open door. So Lord. this year, as we come together, as we come together and remember Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of, Trump, uh, Feast of Trumpets, that we are coming together to go through that open door Yes. that God provides us. Yes. 
and we of the little strength, he will carry us through. Amen. He will carry us through. Sometimes we have to give up self and don't fight. Don't fight him. Because, you know, he says, your burden might be heaven, but his load is light. He wants to take your burden and just take you Lord, and carry you amen. over. Amen. Amen. So as we come and understand, this is a season of open door that the Lord is wanting to do more for us. Mm. More edification and more sanctification and more reconciliation. Lord. More ministry. More peace. More joy. Yeah. More righteousness. But we need to realize that's an open door. And we have to make the choice. Are we going to go through that open door or not? Because mm. it is set before us this day. Year 5784. The open door. That open door. And it's our choice. Do we accept him as our savior? Do we accept him as our God? Do we accept him as our deliverer? Do we accept him as our hope? Or do we just slam that door? That he opens. But that's a door that no man could shut, even though we try to, because his almighty presence is always here. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, you have set before us an open door. Set before us an open door that we could go through and that you will be with us, that you will carry us, that you'll give the strength for us to walk in your word, you. to walk into your strength. <clears throat> but Father, we need to understand <clears throat> that door is open to anybody. It's, it's not just the good people, but the people that have a repentant heart. People that just desire his righteousness. The people that understand judgment, that they want to be right with him. Father, we thank you right now that you hear us. And as we come to that open door, Father, you will carry us through. But it's our choice if we let you do it. Father, I say open each person's heart and the areas in our life that we refuse to let you carry us or refuse to let the angels do their work for us. We repent of that right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this season of the open door that you go forth. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.